it's hard to determine average horse weight even when factoring in height. This is because there is a multitude of breeds, with vastly different conformation characteristics. For example, a gypsy may only be 14 to 15 hands, but a healthy and average weight will be extremely different from a 14 to 15 hand Morgan. For this reason, many people use the Hennick scale as a gauge for proper weight. You'll know in this video the average horse weight chart using very loose guidelines. Average horse weight chart. When speaking about an average horse, most people think of a 900 to 1,100 pound 15 hand horse. However, average horse sizes range from 800 up to 1,800 pounds depending on the breed. Horse breed. Weight in kilograms. Height, HH. American Cream Draft. 725 to 905. 15 to 16.3. American Quarter Horse. 455 to 590. 14 to 16.3. American Saddlebred. 455 to 545. 14.3 to 16.1. American Standard Bread. 545 to 600. 14 to 15. Appaloosa. 455 to 590. 14 to 15. Arabian. 380 to 480. 14.1 to 15.1. Belgian Draft. 860 to 1000 14 to 17.3 Clydesdale 725 to 815 15.3 to 17 Dutch warm blood 545 to 590 15.3 to 16.3 Frisian 545 to 635 15 to 16 Miniature Horse 110 to 225 7.3 to 9 Mustang 365 to 455 12 14.1 Percheron 860 to 955 15.3 to 17.1 Shire 770 minus 1 225 16 to 17.3 Tennessee Walker 410 to 635 14.3 to 15.3 Thoroughbred 455 to 590 15.3 to 17 Wakalusa 455 to 590 14 to 15 Welsh Pony 205 to 340 12 to 13.1 Welsh Cobb 270 to 455 13 to 14.1 The Hennick Scale The Hennick Scale is a good way to assess equine body scores among different breeds. The system uses visual and palpated fat scoring from the ribs, withers, loin, tailhead, shoulders, and neck. The scoring system is rated from 1 to 9, with 5 being ideal. The poorest condition, 1, is a state of extreme emaciation. At this point, most horses will start to experience organ failure. The highest number, 9, is extreme fat that poses an immediate danger. Condition level. Ribs. Neck. Wither. Loin. Tailhead. Shoulder. Poor 1. Prominent in project outward. Bone structure prominent, the horse appears emaciated, no fatty tissues. Bone prominent. Spinous processes project outwardly. Bone projection, no fatty tissues. Bone structure is seen and felt. Very thin 2. Almost no fat covering. Horse still emaciated. Faint fat covering. Slight fat covering spinous processes, but still prominent. Tail head still prominent. Shoulder line highly visible. Thin 3. 
Very slight fat on ribs, still visible. Highly visible withers. Neck highly visible shoulder. Spinous processes only half covered in fat, still prominent and traverse processes can't be felt. Tail head projects but individual vertebrae hidden, pin bones not highly distinguishable. Accentuated. Moderately thin for. Faint. Neck not prominently thin. Withers not obviously thin. Negative crease noticeable on the back. Fat can be felt, but not seen. Hook bones are not discernible. Outline not noticeably thin. Moderate 5. Ribs not visible, but easily felt. Neck blends into the body. Withers rounded nicely. Level back. Fat around tail head and starts to feel spongy. Shoulder blends nicely. Moderately fleshy 6. Ribs not visible, but easily felt. Beginning fat deposits. Beginning fat deposits. Possible positive crease down spine. Fat around tail head is soft. Beginning fat deposits. Fleshy 7. Fat filling between ribs, but ribs still separate. Actual fat deposits. There are fat deposits. Possible positive crease down spine. Distinguishable fat around tail head will be soft. New fat deposits behind shoulder line. Fat 8. Difficult to feel ribs at all. Thickened neck and crest, fatty buttocks. Withers have fat pockets. All positive crease down spine. Tail head very soft. No noticeable shoulder line. Extremely fat 9. Patchy fat and no visible ribs. Bulging fat and cresty, buttocks may rub. Fat bulges. Large positive crease down spine. Fat built up around tail head. Fat bulges. Proper weight. So what is a proper weight for a horse, and why is it important? Ideally, a horse will score a 5, which is a moderate weight and considered ideal. Distinct characteristics of this chart include smooth neck-to-body transitions, rounded withers over the spine, no visible ribs but easily felt, level back, and fat present around the tailhead. Serious irreversible medical issues can arise when a horse is too extreme in either direction on the Hennig scale. Overweight. Horses suffering from obesity have increased stress on both the lungs and the heart. This can also be an issue in developing horses, causing bone and joint issues. Although not a problem in all animals, horses are also at increased risk of laminitis when overweight. No hoof, no horse. Underweight. Although many health problems can result in an underweight horse, nutritional gaps are the primary problem with underweight horses. Nutritional deficiencies can result in a multitude of problems. As horses become emaciated, they lose necessary muscling and protective fat layers. In the final stages, a horse's internal organs will begin to fail. Feed control methods. Feed control is the primary way to control weight on a horse. Exercise is a factor, but grass and feeds can make or break a horse's diet. However, each corrective feeding method has its own challenges. When putting weight on an emaciated horse, it must be done strategically and slowly primarily with easily digestible forage. When dieting a horse, it can be difficult to find low NSC haze or control pasture access or grass growth. Although averages for horse weight are wide-ranging, this chart should give readers a good idea of what ideal and average body weights are. Where do your horses fall on the Hennig scale? If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.